Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, I know everyone is doing their end of year wrap ups right now and their favorite books of 2023 videos. Um, and I know you much rather watch those videos than hear me talk about the last books I read uh, at the end of December. But there's an order to these things and uh, I need to wrap up my December reading before I can talk about my favorite books. Um, so yeah, here are the last five books I read in 2023. Um, I'll talk about them in the order that I read them. Um, first up is The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox by Maggie O'Farrell. I have read two other books by her this year. Uh, one of them will appear on my favorite books of the year. Uh, and the other one I really liked a lot as well. Um, this one I didn't like as much. Um, I could definitely see Maggie's strong points picking out, um, picking out throughout this book. But overall, in this book, I feel like she's still honing her craft. Um, I thought the premise of the book was very promising. It's a book split over two different timelines. Um, one is set in Edinburgh in the 1930s, where we meet Esme Lennox um, and her family. Um, Esme's sister Kitty is always very obedient, immaculately dressed, um, always behaves in the way that society wants her to behave. Um, but Esme, however, she is a bit more strong-willed, she is restless, she is outspoken, um, she isn't interested in boys, uh, her clothes are always a bit disheveled. So we followed them both when they grew up in India as little girls and then they moved back to Edinburgh uh, as a teenager and we especially learn about how her parents just don't really know what to do with her. Um, and then in the current day we have Iris, uh, I think she's in her late 20s, um, she works at a uh, vintage clothing store um, and one day she gets a letter from a psychiatric uh, facility saying that their unit will close um, and that they have deemed her great aunt Esme well enough to go back, to, uh, to go back into society after 60 years of hospitalization. And since Iris was her only uh, living family left, they have contacted her. Iris didn't even know she had a great aunt um, and up until then, and at first she kind of holds it off, um, but like quickly develops an interest in, in her great aunt and she goes to see her, uh, and she ends up taking her into her home. Um, and I think that probably was the biggest problem for me in this book. The plot just doesn't work for me. Um, you know, you, you would never, with a family member that has been in a psychiatric facility for over 60 years, um, you know, just go there, sign a form and be on your merry way. Um, it just wouldn't ever happen. I just don't think Iris would do that. Just on a whim would even be allowed to do that, um, not get any sort of professional support or advice. Um, so I found it very difficult to suspend my disbelief with that. Um, but yeah, setting that aside, I just found the way the story developed uh, overall a bit lacking. It just feels a bit uh, choppy. There's actually also a third narrative in the book um, of Esme's sister Kitty in the present. Um, she talks about her childhood with Esme, um, but because she has Alzheimer's, her thoughts are very disjointed and jumbled. Um, so yeah, that makes it confusing as well. I think Maggie O'Farrell definitely has an interesting story to tell with this book, and I really appreciated that she chose this topic. Um, the topic of mental health of women and how women were treated at the time who deviated from the norm and how that is different but also in some ways the same from uh, current day society. Um, I actually read this back to back with Britney Spears' memoir and that
actually turn out to be a pretty interesting pairing as well. Um, so I felt like she was onto something with this novel. I just wish she told it differently. Um, yeah, it left me feeling a bit dissatisfied. Um, I think what Maggie O'Farrell is best at, um, and it definitely glimpses through in this book as well, is setting a scene and just evoking a feeling or a mood or capturing a character in just a few sentences. Um, her writing at a sentence by sentence level is is just a marvel. Um, the first paragraph in this book just immediately transforms you. So yeah, there, there is some of that O'Farrell magic in this book. Um, I just don't think that this is her best work. Then I read a Dutch novel called W by Timon Heemstra. Um, I'm just going to mention it briefly because it hasn't been translated into English. Um, I actually picked this up because I was sampling some books that I would potentially unhaul just to see if I uh, enjoyed the writing enough to keep it on my TBR for a little longer um, or you know I would unhaul them and I started reading it and before I knew it I was like 50 or 60 pages in and uh, decided just to finish the story. So this book is about a young man and he reminisces about how he met his friend um, who he refers to as W um, who was his best friend during high school and in his early college years um, until one day he disappears. Um, so it's about our protagonist reflecting on their friendship and what it meant to him and uh, how he feels about him disappearing. Um, it's a very reflective, introspective kind of book um, without being navel gazy. It reads very quickly. Um, it doesn't have much plot to speak of, but it's still um, compulsively readable. Uh, I don't think it's a book that will stick with me, but I just very much enjoyed it for what it was. I also listened to The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. This is a Pride and Prejudice retelling um, or a Pride and Prejudice inspired story. It centers Mary Bennett. Um, she is the middle of the Bennett sisters uh, and in the Jane Austen novel she is portrayed as rather unremarkable and plain, uh, especially in comparison to her sisters. But in this book, Mary gets her own her own voice. Um, the first part of the book runs parallel to the events that happen in Pride and Prejudice, um, but then the latter half goes beyond uh, beyond that and just further on in Mary's life. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I think the author really captured the tone of Jane Austen's world, her wit and her way of observing society. We spend a bit more time with some of the characters that um, were only briefly mentioned or had a very small part in Pride and Pedges, um, but they all feel like um, continuation of that. So that way it stays very true and um, nothing feels out of place. Um, I really liked Mary in this book. I find her very relatable. Um, she's quite shy and quiet. Um, she doesn't like to be the center of attention. Um, she enjoys her own company. She enjoys her books and her music. Um, but she also feels uh, overshadowed by her sisters and feels unloved and unwanted by her family. And that is especially apparent in her re relationship with her mother, who doesn't hide the fact that she thinks of Mary as her least favorite daughter. Um, so yeah, that's why it's so great that she gets her own voice in this book, because she is more of a late bloomer. Um, and Throughout the book she really grows into her own, she stands up for what she believes is right for her, um, she doesn't settle and uh, she speaks up for herself. 
it, it is quite a slow paced novel and um, even though I do usually enjoy that, I feel like in this book it did drag along a little bit um, at some places and I feel like it could have been cut down a little more. So that's one thing I will say about it. Um, I think you can read this book without having read Pride of Pages before. There is enough explained throughout the book um, and all the beloved and not so beloved characters from Pride and Pages all have their role in this book as well, sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller. Um, and I think probably if you have read Pride and Pages, um, it, some parts will feel a bit repetitive um, and could have been uh, left out. But I still think you should read Pride and Prejudice first because obviously um, this book will spoil the entire plot of Pride and Prejudice for you. Um, but yeah, I, I had a really good time with this. I think this is one of the closest ways to be in an Austen novel without actually reading one. The audio version of this was great as well. Um, the narrator did an excellent job. Um, so yeah, that was The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. Then I read The Tie That Binds by Kent Haruf. Um, I believe this is his debut novel and it was first published in 1984. Um, the book starts in 1977 and we meet Edith Goodnow. Um, she is 80 years old and uh, she's lying in a hospital bed with a police officer on the other side of her door um, because she is charged with murder. Um, this is not a murder mystery novel, however, this is more of an account of a woman's life. So we then jump back to the late 1800s when her parents first settled in Colorado and um, started their farming business. Um, Edith gets born and we just learn about her life. She doesn't have an easy life. Um, just farming life in general is hard work and she's expected to help out from an early age. Um, her mother dies at a young age uh, and um, another big event is that her father loses, uh, loses his hand in an accident. And so he becomes completely uh, dependent on Edith and her brother uh, and he's just a very angry uh, bitter man. So Edith becomes sort of trapped in a family uh, and trapped in this sense of obligation to her family. Um, and for a long time she gives up her own happiness for her sense of duty and her sense of uh, devotion she feels towards her family and the farm. Cantaru's writing is just amazing. It's very subtle and uh, very elegant. Um, this is not a plot driven book. It's about everyday people living their everyday lives, um, just dealing with whatever life gives them, good or bad. And uh, in this case, there is a lot of tragedy in the story. Um, but in between the lines, he manages to capture the resilience and uh, beauty of Edith's character. Um, she is one of those true understated heroines. There's a love the author has for the landscape, the characters and the lives that these characters have that really shimmer through in this book. Um, it's a, a quiet story that runs really deep. Um, it, it captures the grit of the human spirit um, without losing its softness and its beauty. Uh, yeah, I really love this. I absolutely would love to read more of uh, Haruf's novels. And the very last book I read in 2023 was Stolen by Angele Lestadius. This is uh, translated from the Swedish. Um, I started reading this on Boxing Day, which you can see in my Vlogmas inspired reading vlog. I'll link it down below. 
uh, and in that video I was still pretty excited about it but unfortunately it all uh, went downhill from there um, this ended up being such a disappointment um, so this is about a nine-year-old girl called Elsa she is a Sami girl. Sami are the indigenous people of Scandinavia and a small part of Russia as well. Um, she lives in the northernmost part of Sweden, uh, above the Arctic Circle. Um, and her family are all reindeer herders. So the book starts when one day she decides to ski to her family's reindeer herd um, to start feeding them. Um, However, when she gets there, she sees that one of their reindeer has been killed and the man who has obviously killed it um, is still there. He sees Elsa and he uh, gestures to her that he will kill her if she tells on him. Um, her family reports the crime to the police um, who say they can't do anything because there's no proof. Uh, and Elsa, of course, is too afraid to speak up, um, so the best they can do is report the reindeer as stolen. This is apparently something that uh, their family and other Sami reindeer herding families have been dealing with uh, for a long time, and it will keep on coming back in the book as well. Um, and then, in the latter half of the book, we move forward to present day, um, when I think Elsa is, is in her early 20s um, and we just see how things have continued since then. So I thought I would love this book. There's a coming of age element uh, to this book, there's a bit of a mystery, um, I'll learn something about Sami people and their culture, um, except I didn't get that, um, not really anyway. Um, first of all, there is no mystery. Um, the family six, the family suspects one man of killing their reindeer. Um, we immediately know that that is in fact the man that Elsa saw that one morning, uh, and we know that he kills more reindeer because we get his perspective as well. Um, so when we, so when we first get Roberts. Um, point of view that he is the reindeer killer. Uh, I thought um, uh, this could be interesting. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll hear his side of the story. There's this obvious tension between the Sami people and the Swedish people in the area they live in, um, and I would love to hear more about where that comes from. Um, but you don't get that. It's just a very one sided story of us good, them bad. There is no interesting background story to Robert, no uh, redeeming qualities. He is just a psychopath who enjoys killing animals for the fun of it. Um, and by the way, there is massive trigger warnings for animal cruelty in this book. Um, he is just a old-fashioned, one-noted villain. And then the majority of this book was just him killing a reindeer, hearing about how he hides his track, the family reporting it, the police not being to, not being able to do something about it, and just and then just repeat that six or seven times. And then there were a lot of elements in this book that could have been fleshed out more that I would have loved to learn more about. Um, for example, there's a suicide quite early in the book um, and we are later told in the book there's quite a high suicide rate among young Sami people because um, they experience a lot of pressure from their community elders to keep the rain herding tradition up um, and on the other hand their community is threatened and there are uh, and their animals are killed all the time. Um, so I would have found it very interesting to learn uh, to learn more about that. E except that we we don't get to know the person in question. Uh, we don't find out why he did it. We are told it in an offhand sentence later on in the novel. 
um, but it doesn't get explored any further. And I felt like the author wanted to put it in um, because it's obviously something that is important to her, that, that it's important to her that we learn about um, the suicide rate uh, within the Sami people. Um, but the way but the way that it is dealt with in this book it just holds no meaning at all and there's a few other moments like that where i thought um you know tell me more about this let's explore this topic about um women in the salmon community or about how trauma and hate gets passed down the generation um there were just so many opportunities that the author didn't take uh, and I I just don't know what the author was trying to do. Um, the, the plot was repetitive but then all over the place at the same time. I, I don't know what tone she was trying to take with the book. Uh, in the beginning I was doubting that maybe this was a YA novel or even maybe a middle grade novel. Uh, I just don't know what this book was supposed to be. I think I'll stop talking about it now. It's not going to get any better. Um, I'm so sad that I didn't enjoy this book. I honestly thought it would be one of my favourite books of the year. Uh, I saved it for my Boxing Day read especially. Um, and it was, it was just such a letdown. Um, I gave it, I think, two and a half stars in the end. And... I feel like that's generous. Um, this book has a, I think, 4.1 or 4.2 average rating on uh, the story graph and Goodreads. Um, I, I, I don't know what book those people have been reading because this just wasn't that good. Okay, so on that note, um, those were the last books I finished in December. Don't worry, I actually finished this on the 30th and I started a reread um, of one of my favorite books on the 31st. So I still ended my year with a book I enjoyed. Tell me about the last book that you were really hyped to read but that ended up being a disappointment. Um, it, it doesn't happen to me often. I'm usually pretty good at predicting what books I will love. I'll get surprised in a good way sometimes uh, when I will love a book that I thought would just be okay um, but not so much the other way around. Um, so yeah, let's quickly grab my stack for the thumbnail. My next video I think will be my favourites of the year. Uh, are you excited? I'm excited. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. It was so nice having you here. Um, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.